super ultra wide monitors are fun and exciting to use and the moment you switch to one it becomes really hard to go back to a normal size monitor for the content creators out there you know how easy editing becomes when you have that screen real estate to contend with and for the aesthetic lovers out there you no longer have to worry about the bezel in the middle which comes with two 27 inch monitors side by side but there's a catch most super ultra wise require a bunch of accessories to give you the full experience and the samsung odyssey neo g9 is no exception in this video i give you eight accessories that will take your experience with the odyssey neo g9 to the next level buckle up and let's go for the ride Getting into it, while this might be subjective, getting a monitor amp elevates your user experience and for few good reasons. First and foremost, a monitor amp adds so much ergonomics to your setup by allowing continuous adjustments and orientations. Case in point, I'm able to adjust my monitor further back, closer to my face, swivel left or right, and that allows for the ultimate user experience. Something to note though, before buying one, you'll need to take into account the following. A monitor amp that can handle the weight of your monitor, cause the last thing you want is realizing your monitor amp can't handle the weight of your monitor after buying it. I'd recommend doing a bit of research before getting one, and once you've done that, you'll most likely bump into the HX Agotron Monitor Amp or the Agox Monitor Amp. My personal recommendation is the HX Agotron Monitor Amp since it's the one I'm using, although it sits on the premium budget end of the market, but like they say, you get what you pay for. Secondly, a monitor amp instantly creates space and helps reduce visual clutter. Using my monitor as an example, I had it on its original start and not only did it eat up a lot of my desk space, but also made the desk look so cluttered, which brings me to the next benefit of a monitor amp, cable management. As we all know, the cable mesh starts from the I.O. plugged into the monitor, but the beauty about it is most monitor amps, if not all, come with cable management channels, which help reduce the cable mess, hence making your desk setup look aesthetically pleasing. Speaking of I.O., the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 doesn't come with many ports and the fact that it lacks a USB-C port and almost every device uses a USB-C, dangle is almost a necessity for one main reason. Dangles offer hardware expansion. For those who've got a decent amount of accessories, this will come in clutch as you won't have to worry where your peripherals will be plugged. When it comes to what brand to go for, there's a myriad of brands to choose from but if you'd ask me, Anker and U Green are my go-to dongles. Speaking of dangles, KVM switches are also a type of dangle but offer different functionalities. In case you didn't know, the Odyssey Neo G9 was specifically designed for gaming and the fact that it doesn't have an inbuilt KVM switch means switching between computers and peripherals becomes hard. Let's say you wanted to switch between your Mac and PS5. With just a single key press, you'll be on your PS5 interface which is an absolute time saver. They also offer multi-platform support which allows you to control a variety of platforms and operating systems regardless of their configuration and it doesn't stop there. KVM switches also help reduce visual clutter because they offer centralized control by offering one connection point for a host of devices, making it easier to manage and monitor multiple systems simultaneously. Since we've been talking about a bottleload of peripherals being connected to your computer or monitor, here are a few must-haves for the Odyssey Neo G9. Starting off with the webcam, the Odyssey Neo G9 for the most part is just a display and since our desk setups serve multiple purposes, a webcam is not only essential for those Zoom meetings, but also for the streamers out there, it comes in clutch whether you're deep in your gaming sessions or just a live stream on Twitch. When it comes to choices, again, it's quite subjective depending on your budget, needs, tests, just to name but a few. So the one I'm currently using is the Insta360 Link and tell you what, despite the high price tag, it's got all the bells and whistles plus so much more. With features like face tracking, zoom in and out all by use of hand gestures, your zoom calls and live streams are about to go to the next levels and that's not all. Thanks to its AI capabilities, you'll be able to explain things on your whiteboard while presenting with so much ease. On the flip side though, like mentioned earlier, it's quite expensive and at 570 Australian dollars, it sits on the premium budget end of the market, but there's lots of budget options out there like the Logitech C922, C925E, the Brio 500, and if you want to go even cheaper, the C270 will only cost you 50 Australian dollars. Still on the subject of peripherals, the next important one is a monitor light. With such massive screen real estate, after a while of use, you start to feel the effects of the glare and that's where a monitor light comes in. My personal favorite being the BenQ screen by Hello, and despite being not so cheap, most YouTubers rock it in their setups. Besides its main function of reducing the glare on the screen through its asymmetrical light pattern, I like how it also lights up my desk setup and acts as a key light when shooting product photos and reels. A 
Another thing I like about it is it leaves such a minimal footprint unlike traditional desk lamps and the best thing about it is the controller is wireless. You simply turn it on by hovering your arm over the sensor. From there, you can adjust the brightness, temperature or just set it to auto and it will give you the best settings. Attaching it on your monitor is super easy thanks to the adapter it comes with and the light on the counterweight helps to further reduce eye strain by illuminating the wall. For those on a bit of a budget, the Qantas or the Xiaomi light bar would be good alternatives. Speaking of illumination, the Odyssey Neo G9 does come with a sweep through light at the back of the monitor otherwise known as the Infinity Core lighting which has a bit of a futuristic look to it but its luminance is not that significant. Although not a necessity, you could attach RGB lights at the back of your monitor for a more immersive gaming experience or just for that aesthetic appeal. If that sounds like a good idea to you, Govi light strips are a good budget option that offer excellent functionality. Moving along, like they say, sound is 50% of the viewing experience and for the Odyssey Neo G9 that half is a bit wanting. At best, its built-in speakers are subpar, hence the reason why a pair of desktop speakers or a soundbar would make a big difference more so if you edit videos. While audio perception is subjective, there's certainly a baseline on what's good and what's not. In each case, the fundamental guideline should always be clarity, detail, dynamic range and clear separation between the frequencies. I chose to go with the Kanto YU2 speakers and they not only provide good quality sound but are also an aesthetic masterpiece. Speaking of aesthetics, they come in a variety of colors and you could always pick one that best suits you, whether it's black, orc, red, the choice is yours. I use them for video editing a lot and the sound is super accurate for me to monitor my audio levels, the only caveat being they don't pack that much bass. As for the price, they sit on the premium budget end of the market and they would set you back around 500 Australian dollars which is about 338 American dollars. Again, there's lots of budget options out there and at 159 Australian dollars, the Logitech Z407 would be a good starting point. For those keen for the sound test, here's how it sounds with other speakers. And here's how it sounds with the speakers. But each of the traits has a price tag attached to it. And it's just like, do you want to pay the price tag to get Finally, although not a necessity, a desk shelf is another accessory that would give your Odyssey Neo G9 that clean aesthetic look and here's hair. If you're like me and have a decent amount of accessories, it's inevitable to have cables sticking out and things looking disorganized underneath your monitor. A desk shelf makes things look more organized by hiding any cables that are sticking out. The one I'm currently using is the Desky Monitor Riser and Boy, does it make such a big difference. As shown in past videos, here's the setup without the riser and here's the setup with the riser. Like most of the accessories on this list, there's a variety of options you could buy or if you're good with the tools, you can even make one yourself. Well, that sums up some of my favorite Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 accessories. Let me know in the comment section which ones you like the most and any recommendations you'd have. If you've got to this point of the video, I want to say a big thank you because you have no idea how much that means to me. Plus, it helps the algorithm push the video more. And while in that spirit, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. To see my in-depth review of the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9, check out this video. Until then, people of the internet, I'm signing out. See you on the next one.